On a hot summer day in 2003, Brian Wells, a 46-year-old pizza delivery driver in Erie, Pennsylvania, found himself entangled in a bizarre and terrifying situation. It was a day like any other, when he set off in his car, armed with a fresh, warm pizza, towards a remote delivery location. Little did he know that this seemingly mundane delivery would be anything but ordinary. Arriving at the secluded spot, Wells was confronted not by a hungry customer, but by a group of conspirators with a malevolent agenda. Their faces hidden, they forced Wells into a chilling predicament, strapping a bomb around his neck. He was told the device was live and would detonate if he didn't comply with their demands. The threat was clear, comply or perish. Understandably bewildered, Wells found himself thrust into a macabre scavenger hunt. His captors handed him a complex set of instructions. It was a chilling game, a perverse twist on a childhood activity with the highest stakes imaginable, his life. The instructions were his lifeline, his only hope of disarming the deadly device strapped to his neck. In a state of panic and confusion, Wells was sent off on his grim mission. The conspirators watched as he drove away, the ticking of the bomb echoing ominously in his ears. They had turned a routine pizza delivery into a deadly game of survival. As the clock ticked down, Wells was left to navigate this perilous task alone, racing against time and his own rising fear. The city of Erie, once familiar and safe, had become a treacherous labyrinth filled with unknown dangers. Each tick of the bomb was a reminder of the deadly predicament he was in, a constant echo of his captor's cruel game. With a ticking time bomb around his neck, Wells walked into a PNC bank. The fear in his eyes was as palpable as the threat hanging around his neck. He slid a note across to the bank teller, a note that held a demand for a staggering quarter of a million dollars. An ordinary man thrust into an extraordinary situation, Wells had become an unwilling participant in a high-stakes game of life and death. With the bank's alarm bells ringing in his ears, he exited the bank, his bag now filled not with the full quarter of a million dollars he had demanded, but only a fraction of it. His next stop was a nearby parking lot, but this was no ordinary stop on a pizza delivery route. This was where the police apprehended him. The gravity of the situation was sinking in, not just for Wells, but for everyone present. The police were on edge, the ticking of the bomb, a dreadful metronome counting down the remaining moments of Wells' life. As the police held their breath, waiting for the bomb squad to arrive, the unimaginable happened. The bomb that had been a silent, deadly threat till then, detonated. In a split second, Brian Wells' life was extinguished, leaving behind a cloud of smoke and a whirlwind of questions. This was not a scene from a Hollywood blockbuster, but a horrifying reality that unfolded in broad daylight on a typical August afternoon. In a shocking turn of events, the incident was broadcast live, leaving viewers with countless questions. What had started as an ordinary day had spiralled into a chilling spectacle of crime and mystery. As the smoke cleared, the hunt began to untangle the complex web of deceit and manipulation that had led to this tragic end. The shocking incident sparked an investigation that would reveal a convoluted plot and a web of conspirators. At the centre of this twisted tale was Marjorie Deal Armstrong, a woman known for her history of mental illness and criminal activity. Deal Armstrong was no stranger to law enforcement, having previously been implicated in the suspicious death of a boyfriend. Her involvement in the pizza bomber case, however, would elevate her notoriety to new heights. Deal Armstrong was the mastermind behind the plot, the puppeteer pulling the strings. She had intended to use the stolen money to pay another key player in this grim spectacle, Kenneth Barnes. Barnes, a former television repairman, was promised a slice of the ill-gotten gains in exchange for carrying out a chilling task, the murder of Deal Armstrong's own father. But the web of conspirators did not stop there enter William Rothstein, a handyman known for his high IQ. Rothstein, an old flame of Deal Armstrong, had a significant role in this deadly game. His expertise was enlisted to assist in the construction of the bomb that would ultimately claim Brian Wells' life. Each player had their part, their role to play in this macabre production, but as investigators delved deeper, they found themselves navigating a labyrinth of deception and betrayal. The complexity of the case was staggering. Every lead seemed to spawn more questions, every piece of evidence a new layer of complexity. 
It was a puzzle with pieces that refused to fit neatly together, a jigsaw of criminal intent and human frailty. The motivations of these individuals were as varied as they were perverse. Greed, power, revenge, desperation, a cocktail of dark impulses that led them down a path of destruction. Investigators were faced with the daunting task of unraveling this intricate tapestry of crime. A task that would take years and consume countless hours of detective work. But as they dug deeper, as they peeled back the layers of deceit, a horrifying picture began to emerge. A picture of manipulation, coercion and cold-blooded murder. Years of investigation led to a trial that would finally bring some answers. In this maze of deception and manipulation, the trial of Marjorie Deal Armstrong and Kenneth Barnes was a key turning point. Deal Armstrong, the supposed architect of this intricate plot, was handed a sentence of life, plus 30 years. Barnes, the erstwhile television repairman turned accomplice, was dealt a 45-year prison term. Yet, as the gavel fell and the sentences were declared, a sense of closure eluded those involved in the case. The trial, while illuminating, left many questions unanswered. The full extent of each participant's involvement remained a puzzle. How did a pizza delivery turn into a fatal scavenger hunt? Was Brian Wells a victim or a participant in the plot? The precise sequence of events leading up to Wells' death continued to confound investigators. The role of William Rothstein, the high IQ handyman who assisted in the construction of the bomb, was another conundrum. Rothstein, who passed away before the trial, left behind a trail of cryptic clues that hinted at his involvement. His house, where the bomb was believed to have been built, was a treasure trove of evidence that only deepened the mystery. The trial also brought to light Deal Armstrong's motive. Her twisted plan was to use the stolen money to pay Barnes to eliminate her father. Yet, this revelation only scratched the surface of her complex psychological profile and her history of criminal activity. And then there was the question of the bomb. The deadly device that ended Wells' life was a marvel of malevolent engineering. Who designed it? How was it constructed? These questions, like many others, remained unanswered. The trial of Deal Armstrong and Barnes offered a glimpse into a world of dark motives and convoluted schemes. It revealed a tale of manipulation and coercion that defied comprehension. Yet it also left behind a trail of unanswered questions, a testament to the complexity of this extraordinary case. Despite the convictions, the case left many mysteries unsolved. The Pizza Bomber case stands as a chilling testament to the depths of human depravity. A tale of coercion, manipulation and a gruesome end that still has people riveted, even two decades later. This saga, while tragic, underscores the intricate labyrinth that is human motivation. What drives a person to conceive such a convoluted plot? To strap a bomb to an unsuspecting man and send him on a fatal scavenger hunt? The answer lies somewhere in the murky depths of the human psyche, tangled in the complexities of greed, desperation and derangement. Marjorie Deal Armstrong, Kenneth Barnes and William Rothstein, each with their own twisted motives, wove a web of deceit and violence that resulted in the death of an innocent man. Their plot was not just a bank heist, but a testament to the lengths people will go when driven by psychological distress and malevolent intent. The Pizza Bomber case is a stark reminder of the potential for manipulation and coercion in our society. It speaks of a world where individuals can be forced into unthinkable situations, pawns in a malicious game orchestrated by those who seek to exploit them. This disturbing incident continues to captivate the minds of those intrigued by the darker facets of human nature. True crime enthusiasts around the globe delve into this complex case, seeking to understand the twisted minds behind the plot. It has inspired books, documentaries, and even a Netflix series, each attempting to unravel the intricate details of this extraordinary criminal saga. The legacy of the Pizza Bomber case is not just about the crime itself, but about what it reveals about us as a society. It forces us to confront the grim reality of what people are capable of when pushed to their limits, when gripped by greed, or when suffering from mental illness. The tragic end of Brian Wells continues to captivate and confound, a grim reminder of the dark corners of human nature. The Pizza Bomber case persists as a haunting narrative, a chilling testament to the complexities and depths of human depravity. Thank you for spending time with us on Spookscope today. 
Feel free to share your thoughts and theories in the comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends and family. Until next time, my dear Spooker, stay curious.